folks, today I'm going to show you guys how I tie a near enough sculpin, Dave Whitlock's near enough sculpin. It's one of my, it is my favorite sculpin fly for small sculpins. Um, you know, these two to three inches. Um, it's got a nice silhouette to it. It's got a really nice jigging action. And I figured out how to make it a lot more durable than uh, the original as well. So this is the tannish one. It's a tan grizzly. It's one of my, it was one of my favorite colors this summer. It just has a really good fish color coloration to it. It's, you know, mottled, which they always are. They, if it's up higher in the water column, they see a little bit of that belly, which is a little bit creamier, yet the back is still nice and dark. So I had good success with it. First things we're gonna do, we're gonna tie a size six. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna follow Dave's way. We're gonna scratch up the hook a little bit here. The little nail file. Then we're gonna take some, some mono. Is that 0.45 or 20 pound? We're going to do a mono ramp here. Do a layer of thread right over all those good scratches. Come back up a little. And we're going to lay our piece of mono in on the one side. Three, give it a little bit of a pull. Three. Then I check and make sure that it's nice and parallel to that side of the hook. And I hit it with a drop of my lightning bond. Let it soak for a second. It's done, it's kicked. Pull this down and over, or over the top. Make sure you trim it as close as you can to the same length. You don't wanna have it uh, Terribly askew there, you know. Now this, is, like I said, is a size six, so I'm going to put medium lead eyes on it. If you're not a fan of lead, you can put a lead substitute on, or if you're in waters that don't allow it. I want them pretty far forward. Three on one side, three the other way. Give it a good tug, a couple to make sure that those don't loosen up. Then I do a helicopter. Then four. Then that helicopter again. Same thing, that helicopter really tightens those wraps up. Hit all of this with a good dose of super glue or lightning bond. If you're a zap fan, by the lightning bond, you'll be happier, happier but you can use it. Yeah, soak up the extra. Forgot to make sure that those were perpendicular, but luckily they are. Next, then I take and I bring this hook back up into the, where I can see that barb and get to access to the bend of the hook nicely. Right at the barb. Take my four tail feathers. If you have one that's, you know, a little bent or a little damaged, you know, it's missing a fiber or it's got a little nick in it, like that one's got a little tiny nick in the one fiber there. Just make sure it's on the inside. Okay. 
get those tips nice and aligned the way you want them. Wet them, and I hold them in the other fingers like this. What that allows me to do is to get the tips to where I want them, and then I can roll my fingers this way or this way when I go to pinch to make up that, if you notice there's a difference right there of, I don't know, a sixteenth of an inch. When I go to pick them up, all I do is roll my fingers that way, just this way a bit, get them even, then pinch. Now I've got even tips. And if they aren't, just redo it. Now, <clears throat> I like to have my tails be the entire hook length, and then about which is normally about one and a quarter shanks. I want them just a little bit longer than the whole hook. So if I do that right there, that's about two times the shank. I've just learned that over the time. That's a little too much. There we go. That's about one and a half to two. That's where I like mine to be. Much longer than that, they start to wrap around that hook bin pretty bad. Bring it up. We're going to do a pinch wrap. Second one and a third one. Each one of those I was going forward, if you can see there. Reach in, grab these. Just going to wrap them down. We want that bulk. Otherwise, we've got to fill that bulk up with dubbing. Technically, dubbing isn't free, although it is inexpensive. I don't want to have to use dubbing when I can use the mass of the feathers to build that bulk. Now when I get back down here closer to the tail, I don't want terribly tight wraps. Those are really loose. If I do tight ones, I can sit there and spin it. And if those are a little spent, you can write them just a little bit with your fingers and that'll work. Um, but if you didn't get them right, you really can't fix them. You got to undo it and, and fix it. So I hit that whole area with some flex cement. I've just learned that stuff works well. And I'm going to take two pieces of crystal flash, trim those tips. I want my tip just a hair longer than the tail, which I normally don't like my crystal flash a little longer, but I do on this particular pattern. Wrap, pull it over to the far side. I'm trying to get these to go down the side of the tail. Again, I don't want terribly tight wraps here. There we go. That's looking good. Right down the, essentially what would be the quill, right? On that side, on that side, right down the tail. That's what we want. So, you guys all know I like my flies to be bulletproof. I want to tie in a, a single piece of thread, and I want to take it to 6 o'clock, and make it, maybe make, take it to like 5.30. And come back up. I'm going to put it here. I'm going to prep my feather, my soft tackle feather here. And I do like, if I have ones like this one where there's a bunch of damage in it, they work really well as the body feathers. They really do. So that's what I save them for when I find them. If they're horribly damaged, you obviously can't, but if it's just light damage like that, it'll work fine. So I kind of tie that in right at about 11.30, 12 o'clock. And if you noticed, all of that flexman has soaked into that feather that was in there, everything else. So I'm going to put a nice another coat on there. This is one of the things I found to make it a lot more durable. Soak that area. Have it a little damp. Then we're going to do Dave Whitlock's, I don't know what he calls his dubbing technique, but he just loosely takes the the dubbing around his the thread and he wraps the dubbing in his hand like this. What I've found is it gives you a nice corded dubbing and it gives you bulk and it gives you a nice shaggy dubbing as well. And then when you get up here close to the end, you just pull it. But if you notice, I've got a nice shag there to it and I've got a nice taper to it as well. And you can really come in here, take your bodkin, or you know, if you're a vel male Velcro strip guy or a toothbrush like I normally am, but you can really come in here and, and shag this out if you want. But as you guys can see, this is my homemade dubbing. It's spectrumized. It's got uh, peaches and oranges, 
a little tan, some, some white, some three or four different colors of flashes in there. I don't know if you guys can see all of those, but there's a lot going on in my dubbings normally. So Now we're going to take that from 12 o'clock. And in two or three wraps, we want to be almost to the front here. Missed a couple of these marabou type feathers. Want to get those pulled out. Because I normally want to have almost one full turn right, right behind the eyes, which I got. Three or four good wraps to tie that down. Then I take, and believe it or not, I put a drop of flexment right there and I let it soak down in through that dubbing, in through that, all of it. After this thing fully dries, I've tried to take to take and undo them, and you can't. You're literally trying to pull the glue apart, which I, is good. So now I'm going to take this and counter wrap this thread through this soft tackle. It's a little bit harder than, say, a woolly bugger hackle, just because the softness of it tends to capture more fibers. But as long as you wiggle pretty good, you'll come through it. Don't be af afraid if you capture a few, it's gonna happen, it's okay. All you've really done, if you think about it, is just move them around. So now I've got one there. What I then try to do is I wrap it around the eyes. And then I'm gonna give it another coat of flex cement right there. Try to make sure it comes over the front of the eyes a little bit, because the next thing is, is the way Dave built this head was he got all of his bulk again from the dubbing. Pull those back. I kind of do one and a half turns there, and one, two turns there. And then you start coming behind the eyes. Just from experience, I know I'm about done. That's about the right bulk. Looking at it, yeah. Do a three turn whip finish followed by a four turn whip finish or a five turn with that two whip finishes and then take it and actually pull it backwards into the, uh, the previous knot, and that thing never comes undone. Hit that whole area again, drop a flex cement. If you want, you can come in and pick some of this out, give it a nice shaggy look. I don't normally bother because after the first couple of fish, their teeth will start to shag out this dubbing as well, but there's a lot of it there. So it's got some nice bulk to it. And then that counter wrapping that hackle, seriously, 30, 40 smallmouth, and, and the fly doesn't even look like it's caught any. The tail will break off before any of this hackle in here does. Um, so there you go, a near enough sculpin. This is my tannish, a tan grizzly. I fell in love with this color this year. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I enjoyed tying it for you. Do me a favor, click subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks.